Hello and welcome to another very saturated episode of Morris LC Rescue. Uh, you can probably hear yet again, it's uh, pitter patting rain on the roof and uh, yeah, we're wet again. So uh, again, uh, Mother Nature's throwing a bit of a spanner in the works uh, for all the stuff we had planned outside, but we're gonna make the best of it as we do. So uh, with this episode, we're gonna start work on Holly the Rescue Truck. Um, now. Definitely, probably uh, the largest number of views I've received on any of the videos so far was for that particular episode. And uh, a lot, a lot of uh, messages coming in uh, asking to see that truck, uh, potentially just to see if we can unseize the motor and, and maybe get it to, uh, to run a little bit. So that's what we're going to be focusing on. Now, um, having had the luxury of, of looking this truck over, I can tell you there is an awful lot of work to do here. We don't even know if we can unseize the motor at this stage. So what we're going to try and do, we're actually going to try and split this up into two parts because there's just going to be too much information there for just one short episode. Um, so I know that there's a few of you out there actually with LC3s that have seized engines. So it's a perfect opportunity for me to maybe walk you through some of the processes that I use uh, when I'm dealing with an engine that's stuck. And this doesn't just apply to Morris engines, it could be a tractor engine, it could be any engine really. Um, certainly the older engines respond to, uh, to what we're going to uh, show here a little bit better probably than the modern engines. But um, anyway, we'll work our way through it. Uh, Guaranteed to be some surprises along the way. I'm really not 100% sure what we're going to find. Uh, from what I can see, we know that there's parts missing. Uh, we know that somebody has had that head off at some stage. For what reason, we're not sure. Um, we know that that motor is stuck. It could just be a water pump. Uh, it might be the belts frozen on the pulleys. Um, but I suspect, uh, knowing these motors, that uh, there's probably been moisture in that motor and we are dealing with a properly seized engine. So uh, anyway, we're going to grind on with this. Um, to those of you that are looking for a whiz bang episode with lots of fast action, this is probably not the one. Uh, as I say, we, we want to go into things with just a little bit more detail. Um, and it's, it's trying to show people uh, not just the beginning and then the end result, it's, it's all the little bits along the way. So some of you might find it a bit boring, and if that's the case, go and make a cup of tea, or uh, yeah, come and join us for the next episode. <laughs> um, but yeah, look, we'll, we'll step through the process, and uh, yeah, hopefully you'll enjoy what we're gonna, what we're gonna do here today. <laughs> You guessed it, it's the next day and uh, we got rained out yesterday, it was kind of expected and today it's blowing a gale but at least the sun's out for a little bit so we're not going to waste any time, we're going to hop straight into uh, to having a look at Holly the rescue truck. Um, I think the best plan of attack because we need to work on both sides of the engine here is just to take the front off the truck. So remove the radiator. Half the work's been done for us anyway because the radiator support mounts are, are busted off. So uh, that makes it a little bit easier. So we'll hook into that and uh, yeah, then we can start looking at why this engine won't spin over.
So we've got our cylinder head off. It doesn't look terrible. Uh, I've seen a lot worse. There's uh, obviously rust in each one of those chambers, a little bit on the valves. Uh, there's been water, uh, which has been sitting there on the head at some stage, but I don't feel that it's unrecoverable. Um, we can probably clean that up, uh, seat those valves again, and uh, yeah, just have a bit of a look. I think uh, without too much trouble, um, we'll probably give that head a uh, bit of a dip in the electrolysis bath as well and just clean all the muck out from in the galleries um, but yeah I don't think it's unrecoverable so uh, that's that part of it then if we have a look at the block um, what we can see in there we've got our three back cylinders full of oil um, and that's not a bad thing that's a good thing so uh, hopefully that's uh, stopping some of the corrosion that might be occurring in there. There is quite a lot of carbon on the top of this uh, cylinder number one, and for whatever reason, it doesn't have oil in it. Uh, we'll just force a bit of that oil out of the cylinders. It doesn't matter if it runs down into the motor. The whole motor's got to be cleaned anyway, so it's really six of one, half a dozen of another. That's cylinder number two and cylinder number three. Now there are two lowest uh, position pistons and what you can see there is a lot of rust uh, between the cylinder wall and the actual top of the piston. So uh, that's sort of telling me that, um, yeah, potentially we've, uh, yeah, could have some issues here. So we'll um, we'll give each one of those pistons just a little bit of a tap. That'll certainly be why it's not actually uh, turning over. Um, that will certainly stop it from doing that. And uh, we'll just see if we can loosen that up a little bit. If that's what that's like there, um, we probably also need to be taking the bottom end off this motor and having a bit of a stop beat as well. So anyway, we'll give them a tap. I've just got a, uh, a large 70mm uh, diameter nylon rod here which I use for dropping down uh, into the, uh, the uh, piston and a uh, bit of the sleeve and uh, we'll just give these a bit of a gentle tap. chances of that moving are pretty slim. What it might do is just break free a little bit of that rust and uh, loosen things up just a fraction. And I can see that that's actually happening. It's starting to break that rust up a little bit. Right, we might just use a slightly more robust hammer. So what I can see here just by doing that is that distance one, three and four I think uh, have actually broken free. Piston two is definitely going to be our problem child and that's the one with the most uh, obvious rust that I can see. I'm going to clean those walls up as best I can and that'll give me a little bit more of a uh, indication of where we're going. Uh, I'm also, that's really badly rusted there, uh, also going to um, uh, yeah, probably get some more uh, penetrant lubricant in there as well too, some lighter stuff rather than oil. 
and uh, see if that'll make its way down uh, past those pistons and into those rings. So, all right, we'll give that a go. So cylinder one is, is definitely freeing up. Uh, we've cleaned a, a lot more muck out of the, the top of these pistons. And what I'm looking for too is if any of this penetrant is actually disappearing, meaning that it's running down between the cylinder wall and the, uh, and the rings, making its way through. I'm not seeing a lot of that yet, but we just keep working our way around. Like I say, one is definitely, I'm seeing a little bit of movement there, so we'll just keep pursuing this. Right, so we are absolutely 100% now getting a little bit of movement in that engine. So we are definitely, uh, definitely starting to free this motor up. What I'm going to do now is um, just move to a slightly bigger hammer, uh, just a little bit more force. If you remember what they were like before, you can see that uh, number one is now a long way down and it's also sucked a lot of that uh, penetrant out of the, uh, out of the cylinder. Um, all these pistons are now starting to free up and move. Uh, so it's just that little bit of extra force that we're applying that's uh, helping to start turn this motor over. So we'll just keep going. Uh, just keeping in mind, we don't want to drive uh, any one of those pistons uh, when it's right at the bottom of its stroke, because uh, obviously we're going nowhere. What you can see from that little tap there is everything is freeing up now. So we've now got pistons two and three close to uh, top dead center, we're not far off. Uh, four is uh, close to the bottom, which is one. So uh, yeah, this is going really, really well. The issue is if we don't free this motor up, we, we don't even stand a fighting chance of, of getting these, uh, these pistons out of here. So uh, and we'll certainly be doing that to clean them up. So we'll work on uh, two and three now and tap them back down. it's not funny but we'll just keep the same process going working backwards and forwards backwards and forwards but we're very very close now to uh, top dead center and bottom of the stroke for uh, two and three so yeah we'll just keep working away now the truth is there's probably a few people here having a look at this going oh I'm gonna have a heart attack if he hits that engine one more time but um, look Again, this is a method that I've used before. It's, it's worked for me on, on seized and frozen engines. And it's just a time thing. And I, I guess it's a little bit about finesse as well too. You know, steady, steady, catchy monkey. So we're not beating the engine to death. We're just simply trying to loosen up those rings and, and uh, pistons in the sleeves and uh, get that motor to work backwards and forwards. So what we've got now, we've actually got the motor, uh, so it'll probably turn over uh, nearly one full rotation. It's getting stuck. 
uh, just at the top of the stroke on uh, two and three. Um, what I'm thinking, I don't know if this starter motor works or not, but what I might do now, because I can, I can basically rotate this uh, engine 360 degrees, I'm going to see if I can get it to um, fully brake free just using the starter motor. I've dumped a heap of oil uh, down uh, in the pistons, um, just to make sure we've got plenty of lubrication there. And uh, yeah, we'll just try and give it a crank and uh, yeah, see if that frees it up a little bit more. We've got our little uh, workshop test battery here. She's fully charged, so um, not a lot of cranking power in this battery, but we shouldn't need a lot if uh, that motor's uh, freeing up and if that starter motor's any good, that's the other unknown quantity. Got the jumper leads here, so uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll try and hook up to that starter and, and give it a bit of a crank. Um, probably not a good idea to do this unless you're actually at this stage where we know the motor is turning over. If, if you've got a motor that is uh, partially or fully seized, um, yeah, probably not a great idea to try and uh, just go straight for the starter motor. I mean, you risk doing damage uh, not only to the starter motor, but the ring gear and potentially the motor itself if things go south. I've got no idea what this wiring's like, so uh, it may or may not, uh, may or may not want to cooperate off the starter switch. Not really turning over enough there to throw that in. Just give that a few little taps. sitting in there. Hey, always love going where other people have been before. You just never know what you're going to find. Rightio, well I think we'll um, take that starter motor out <laughs> and uh, give that a proper check and uh, yeah, see where we go from there. Okay, so we've got our starter motor out and uh, we're just going to check off the battery and see if our gear is actually engaging here when we, uh, when we crank it over. So we'll just put one foot on the starter motor. We've got our positive terminal already on the starter because we don't want to damage that terminal and we'll just go off the positive terminal on the battery. Okay, so straight up what we can see there is that that's not engaging. So, and what I can see there, I think we've got a broken spring as well. Uh, that looks like that's broken clean through there. So, uh, we might have a little bit of work to do on our starter, I think. I think I might go and have a look and see if I've actually got another starter motor around the place that's working that we, uh, we could swap this one out for. And um, yeah, at least we can go to the next step and uh, we can repair that one. Okay, well I've been to my uh, big box of spares and uh, I've got a starter motor here that doesn't look in bad condition. We'll give it a test. Of course, we'll fully rebuild this by giving it a couple of squirts of penetrine before we put it back in. Keep in mind, guys and girls, that all we're doing at the moment is just seeing, uh, we're doing the bare basics to see if we can get this truck to turn over. Uh, you know, if it gets to the stage where we need it to be reliable and, uh, you know, a daily drive, who knows, you know, long way in the future, but yeah, then we'll, we'll take the trouble of actually pulling the motor out and uh, yeah, doing a lot more detailed work on it. But for now, um, we just need to see if we can turn it over. Okay, we'll get rid of our starter motor that we know is needing some work. And try our new starter motor. Sound too good. Why is 
using what a little, little bit of lubrication does on these starter motors. It's got to glide fairly freely on there. So that's what we're seeing there now. And that will be uh, be more than good enough for what we need to do here. As I say, fully rebuilt. There we go. All right, we'll get that back in and uh, get back to where we were. All right, well, we've got our new old starter motor in there. So, uh, yeah, we're back to where we were before. We're just about to uh, try and turn this motor over now. And, uh, yeah, let's just see if this goes any better. That worked brilliantly, so I'll just bring the camera in a bit closer so that you can get a better view. Okay, so we'll hook our power up and you'll see the pistons. Okay, well, that's... Uh, it's definitely unseized now so uh, yeah that's what I call success I can also uh, I know that my oil pumps working um, because I can actually see the oil coming out of the feeder line that goes up to the, uh, the rocker assembly so um, yeah that much is working all right well that's pretty darn good I think we'll move on to the next stage Okay, well next piece of the puzzle, I actually get to work indoors for a bit. The wind's picked up again, so it's a little bit unpleasant again outside. Um, what I want to do is strip this head down now. Um, we'll take the plugs out, uh, take the valves out, and uh, quick as we can, we'll get this in the electrolysis bath and, and clean it up. It is pretty grungy inside, so uh, the sooner we can get all that muck out, the easier it'll be to actually assess the condition of it and, and see if it's, it's good to be uh, rebuilt. Um, when I say rebuilt, we're going to do the bare minimum to it. Um, we're really not spending any money on this motor at this stage. We're just doing what we can to, uh, to see if it will run and how well it will run. Um, plan B, if this head is toast, uh, which I don't think it is, I think we'll be able to recover it. Um, I do have a head that I rebuilt not so long ago, so I have got that option there uh, if this one uh, proves to be uh, a no-go. But uh, yeah, I think once we clean it up and uh, yeah, probably grind those valves a little bit, I think everything will come together nicely for us. So, all right, let's uh, get stuck into it. valves have come out without too much of a fight. I've actually got a really cheap and nasty little valve uh, removal tool set here. Um, absolute uh, budget basic set. I did find that these were bending a little bit but that was only because some of those uh, collets on the valves were, were pretty badly stuck. Um, the wash up is um, I'm actually pretty happy. So we did have two stuck valves. Now, again, you know, who knows? Uh, quite possibly they weren't stuck when the motor stopped. Uh, but then again, I have had uh, these motors with sticky valves causing the issue. So anyway, I guess we'll never know. Um, looking at them uh, look, and looking at the seats, I think this will all clean up okay. Hey, I've got no broken springs. 
Um, the valves, uh, you know, yeah, of course they're a little bit worn, but uh, I think uh, if we go old school, um, we'll be able to reseat them quite easily. Um, we'll get these plugs out now and uh, just have a little bit of a clean up, I think, first. I've made a lovely mess. So, um, yeah, we'll get these plugs out and then we'll get our electrolysis bath running. Now, under normal operating circumstances, we'd be able to pull these plugs and, and they'd all tell us a bit of a story. They might tell us that one cylinder was uh, burning a bit of oil or the motor was uh, running too rich or too lean. Uh, the reality is that, yeah, there's nothing we can really learn off these plugs. Uh, looking at them, they may not have actually been terribly old uh, when this motor did stop operating. The electrodes aren't burnt down on them. There isn't a lot of gunge in them, but they are a little bit rusty. And uh, yeah, there's obviously been some moisture in that block when uh, or after this motor stopped running. So uh, yeah, not much we can learn from that. But I don't really want to spend a lot of time uh, covering off on the electrolysis uh, process again, simply because we've gone into that quite extensively in a previous episode. But uh, what I have changed here is I've actually put uh, just a couple of offcuts of 25mm um, electrical conduit uh, underneath our head. I'll roll that over so it's uh, flat, but that'll just allow the water and the electrolysis action to circulate all around that head as well as through that head. Um, I've just dug a couple of mouse nests out from inside it so uh, yeah some pretty nasty stuff in there um, but yeah look we'll give it a couple of hours in the bath and uh, yeah hopefully we'll see a big change So we've got plenty of action happening there in our electrolysis tank at the moment. It's only been a couple of minutes, um, but probably just a, a good chance to do a quick safety recap with uh, the electrolysis process. Always, always make sure, guys and girls, that you do this outside because, uh, as we discussed in the uh, previous episode, the byproduct of this electrolysis is hydrogen gas, which is highly explosive. So uh, we've got electricity, we've got explosive gases. So uh, yeah, just a great idea to do this sort of stuff outside and not in the shed. All right, we'll let this boil away and we'll get back to Holly. I've used the starter motor to turn the engine over. I guess I just want to feel for myself exactly uh, how free this motor is. So I've got the crank handle in here at the moment and I can just turn that motor over like a knife through butter. It is really, really, it's turning over beautifully actually. So uh, despite the fact it was so badly locked up, it's, um, yeah, it's really free now. So that's, uh, that's definitely a victory, I think. Yeah, it's a fair sort of a guess. It's been a long time between oil changes for this old girl. And uh, what I've just discovered is this nut here on the sump plug is completely rounded off. I hate that. I mean, yeah, it's a brass, uh, a brass nut, so once you've uh, destroyed it by putting the wrong socket or a crescent spanner or whatever, it becomes virtually impossible to, uh, to use the right tool for the job. So unfortunately, we're resorting to vice grips here to make this happen, which I absolutely hate doing because that just finishes the job that the other person started. It's not, not a good way to go. Now, remember this oil had been, well, someone had added oil to this motor, so I'm actually not really anticipating this oil is going to be grubby uh, based on what we saw coming off the dipstick, but uh, we'll get it out of here anyway. Uh, it's just a, a right oily mess under here, which you expect for a vehicle of this age. So anyway, we'll let all this go. Put that up there where we're guaranteed to lose it. Uh, once we've done this, then we can actually take this sump off and uh, yeah, have a look at whatever the damage might be in the bottom of the motor and uh, yeah, certainly get to that oil uh, oil pump and that little mic that little mesh filter that's on there that I yabber on about all the time. Um, just can't uh, understate how important it is to keep that filter clean. So. So if there was going to be a uh, positive takeaway here, it's going to be that from what I can see, none of the sump bolts are either missing or sheared off. And the sump itself is in unbelievably good condition. 
Um, it's not uncommon to find these stoved in at the front here. So, um, yeah, from what I can see, she's, uh, yeah, there's not a dent on it, which is, is really surprising for one of these old engines. Uh, especially being a commercial vehicle, they have a hard life. So, uh, all right, well, we'll get all, these, uh, get all these bolts out and see what the sump tells us. Well, hey presto, that's the sump off and uh, what that's revealing is, uh, yeah, quite a lot of sludge in the bottom here. Uh, there is definitely some water there, as you can tell by the, the white there, which is probably all sorts. Uh, a bit hard to tell what's what at the moment. I can feel a little bit of metal in the bottom there. That's never a good sign, uh, but yeah. I'm really not sure at this stage. Um, we'll have a little bit of a look underneath here. We'll have to clean that out carefully. Doing this on the gravel part of my driveway like an idiot. Um, Rightio, so, uh, yeah, I don't know. That looks a bit rusty to me. I reckon there's probably been some water in there. Um, Overall, at first glance, um, yeah, it doesn't look too bad. We, we need to do a lot of cleaning in here, a lot of cleaning. Um, she's, uh, look, it is what it is. It is what it is, so. It's actually it's surprising. I don't know whether, um, whether maybe the oil that was put in there did a good job and took some of it off, but it's actually a surprising, there's not a lot of grime up in the top of this motor. Usually you get a lot of grime uh, sitting up in here, um, which I just can't feel. I can feel carbon and, and other sort of muck, goodness knows what, in there. So we really will get in there. We'll take those pistons out and then we'll, we'll literally get in there and hose everything out with a good degreaser. Um, but yeah, no, that's, uh, that's better than expected, I think. So all in all, um, yeah, I think we're doing okay. Okay, um, so I'm just going to clean out the bottom of the sump. I'm just feeling around in here. Um, I don't... It does feel like sort of metal there. Uh, it's hard to tell if it's bearing material or, or exactly what it's from. Um, yeah, I think we're just going to have to clean all of it out. And then... Um, yeah, just have a close inspection of our uh, of our bearings. Gonna have to call it quits for today shortly because we're gonna lose our light. But what I wanted to show you, this cover plate will have to come off. I'll take that off next. But you can actually see some of that uh, garbage that's dropped down in there. I think a lot of that might have dropped in there as we were taking the head off. One thing I've also noticed here is just how stuck these uh, push rod lifters are. I've got one here and only one that I can actually lift out. I've pulled that out and just turned the motor over just to make sure that the cam was actually turning, which it is, but these lifters are all pretty well stuck. So what I'm just gonna do is tap down the ones that will tap down, and then I'm going to put a little bit of oil in them overnight or penetrate and uh, yeah, see if that does us any good. Uh, in the 
morning. But uh, yeah, again, you know, no surprises, I eh? like it's just, it is what it is. You expect this in a motor that's been sitting for a long time, and especially one that may have had a little bit of water in it, so. All right, I actually think that's where we might leave it for tonight. Um, it's, uh, we'll cover this motor up. We're guaranteed to get a shower of rain or two tonight, but all in all, uh, yeah, that's not a bad effort for a few hours this afternoon. I've uh, really not had much of a chance on this truck because of the weather. But uh, yeah, I don't think that we've done too bad at all, all, uh, all things considered. Uh, we've now got a motor at least that turns over. Um, we've got our head uh, boiling away nicely in our electrolysis bath, so we'll shut that down and kick that off again tomorrow. Uh, we're certainly getting some big bubbles out of there, and you can already see the rust that's formed on top. So all of that is muck that's coming straight out of that head. So it'll uh, be interesting to see what result we get there tomorrow. So anyway, I reckon that's it for today. Well, I guess it was kind of expected. Woke up this morning and uh, yeah, we'd had another 25 mil of rain overnight. Uh, still raining this morning, but uh, it has eased off a little bit. Uh, real good thing that we covered the motor up last night. I, um, yeah, kind of suspected we'd get a good shower of rain. So, uh, yeah, we're going to keep on punching away with this today. Um, hopefully the weather won't uh, get too much in the way, but uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll continue on. While we wait to uh, try and see what the weather's going to do today, I'm uh, just going to start cleaning up these valves and, and the springs and that part of the head. And uh, yeah, we can put a number on the bottom of each of those valves then. And uh, yeah, that way we don't get anything out of sequence. Okay, so that's given our valves and springs a good clean up there. Um, in an ideal world, if we were rebuilding this head from scratch, I actually use Holden valves. I think I've talked about that once before. Um, they're cheap and accessible and a good replacement for the Morris uh, valves. Uh, you do need to do a little bit of work on the uh, valve guide and actually shorten the stem of the valve slightly. But uh, yeah, they are a good replacement. So uh, I think what we'll do now, we'll go and check on our head and see how our electrolysis bath is going. And uh, yeah, if we're ready to start cleaning stuff with the pressure washer. Well, it's still raining outside, unfortunately. Yeah, looks like we've got a bit of set-in weather today. So, uh, but it's not heavy rain. I hope we can work around it. Um, we have got one mean looking brew going on here. So I'm gonna shut this down in a sec and actually draw our head out and just have a bit of a look and see if it might be ready for pressure washing. And uh, yeah, see how much of that muck has actually uh, has come off. Okay, so we've disconnected our power to our electrolysis bar, very nice and safe. This water is hot, so um, I'm not gonna stick my hand in there. I'm just gonna try and find part of this head that I can grab and uh, maybe get a, a good enough hold off to at least lift part of it out. <laughs> Okay, up she comes. Oh wow, that is incredible. Wait, don't fall back in. That is amazing, the amount of guns that that has stripped off there. Um, I might just grab some gloves, that head is baking hot. So um, yeah, we'll lift that right out and have a proper look. Okay, here we go. Right. So what we can see here, there is a lot of that surface rust has just been ripped away and uh, we're also starting to clear out inside the galleries. Um, we can see uh, our intake and our uh, exhaust uh, galleries here. Um, there is still a little bit of rust in there, but a lot of it now is just loose rust. So what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to give this a pressure wash first and just get as much of that out of there as I can. And then what we'll do is we might uh, put some fresh water in our bath and just stick it in for another round. 
Um, it won't have to be anywhere near as long as we did it this time around, but uh, that has really loosened up a lot of that material and a lot of that rust is, is just gone. Uh, so, uh, all right, we'll do that. We'll set up the pressure washer. Okay, well, that's a pretty remarkable difference. Um, we've still got a little bit of muck in there. Um, I think just for the hell of it, we might actually just pop that back in, we'll put some fresh water and uh, give it another round in the bath. Um, it is way, way, way better than, uh, than what we started with. Um, certainly, you know, you can see just how much of that has been stripped off uh, on the intake and exhaust uh, exhaust uh, galleries there, so uh, we'll keep chipping away at it. We'll give it we'll give it another round in the bath, and uh, I actually think we'll get it even better than that. So, and it won't take too long now because we've stripped the worst of it off. Okay, so all we've done is a repeat of what we had before. Um, we're not going to see as much of a reaction this time around because we've actually removed a lot of that rust already. But uh, yeah, I can see it reacting there. So um, yeah, we'll leave that for a little bit longer and uh, yeah, see what happens. So it is still raining cats, dogs and giraffes at the moment. Uh, not a great day for being outdoors, but it is what it is. So I've got this engine uh, covered up at the moment. I'm really not that game to take the tarp off, um, especially not with that much of the motor exposed. So what I think I'm gonna have to do is just get underneath the truck, um, suck it up, uh, put my big boy pants on and uh, get on with it. I think I, I need to get those bearing caps off, have a look at them and uh, if we can get those pistons out and uh, start cleaning that motor. So, uh, all right, we'll, uh, we'll get stuck into it. So just a little bit difficult at the moment with the weather and uh, where I'm actually working outside to show you this, but um, each one of these bearing caps uh, on the, uh, on the Conrods uh, has its own little split pin in there through the, the castellated nut. So uh, we'll take all those split pins out first and uh, yeah, then we'll be able to take those nuts off. So I'm just going to ease these, uh, ease these little suckers out. They'll break off most likely, but we've got replacements, so that's okay. These ones have definitely been in here a good long while. Okay, so some days you just really feel like you're battling technology and the elements. So I was under there and uh, realized my battery had gone flat. So um, what I've done, I've taken all the nuts off, uh, off our bearing caps and discovered something on the way. Number three cylinder, the nut, has split clean through, top to bottom. And uh, what I found, there must have been some fairly significant knocking in that motor because uh, basically it was still there and it was being held on by the split pin but it was quite loose uh, so it had worked down a little bit and um, yeah there was movement there so there's no way that that wouldn't have been making a knocking noise in the engine this is not the um the conrod by the way out of the motor it's just one i grabbed um, just to demonstrate where that nut was but uh yeah that's um definitely interesting so I popped those pistons up. Um, it's just stopped raining again. It's been belting down for the last half an hour. I'm gonna head back out there, set the camera up, and uh, yeah, just draw these pistons now out of the top of the engine. Okay, so just while we've got a tiny little break in this weather, it's already spinning to rain again. I'm gonna whip these covers back and uh, just have a look at the tops of these pistons. They should be marked with front and a number. Uh, one, two, three, four. So we'll just check that before we physically remove them, just so that we can make sure we get them back in in the right order and in the right orientation. Okay. I 
bring that camera in closer. Like I say, it's spitting to rain already, so we'll be as quick as we can. Let's have a look at piston number one here. Oh yeah, he's got a front mark on him, I think. I think that's his front. Yep, front, front, front. Oh yeah, there is a front on there. You can see it now. So. Okay, so that's one, two, three. Stamp there. And four is stamped there. So that's great. We can uh, lift those out and know that we're going to put them back in the same order. So we'll do one and two first. Get them inside out of the weather. Number three. And of course, number four's popped back down. So I'll have to quickly dive under and pop them back down. This rain is not making life easy. Okay, that's number four out. Rightio, well we've got everything laid out here. Um, not going to lie to you guys, it is pretty average. Um, number one piston has a broken top ring, we can replace that. Uh, what I think we will be doing is uh, getting these pistons into the ultrasonic bath again. And uh, some of that is going to be rust, some of that is going to be carbon. Uh, we'll try and get as much of that oil off as we can before we put them in the bath and uh, yeah, give that a bit of a go and see where that gets us. Okay, I've just turned our electrolysis bath off second time around and there is actually again a surprising amount of garbage that's come out of that head. Uh, so we'll get that out of there, uh, get it cleaned up and get it dried off before it rusts again. Okay, so I probably shouldn't use the word astonishing transformation, but uh, I feel I've got to in this case, and it just sort of proves the power of uh, using electrolysis to uh, resurrect some of these old parts. Uh, if you have a look down in there now, keep in mind this is after two, uh, uh, two, uh, two turns in the electrolysis bar. Um, it is just clean stripped, uh, all that uh, manky scaly rust that was on the intakes. Uh, it's completely gone, intake and exhaust. Um, and it's it's just like a different head really. Um, all those blockages. Um, we could probably even, you can just see in there, there's a little bit of surface rust still in there. Um, but those holes are all open, they're clear. Um, I haven't had to do anything there. They've just, the, the rust has been stripped out of them. And if you wanted to, you could probably even go again. I mean, the reality is there's no limit uh, to how often you could uh, run this or how many times you could run this through your electrolysis bath. It's really only limited by the time. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's put us in a really good position. Um, we can do a little bit of an old school valve grind on these now and uh, just try and reseat our valves a little bit better. And uh, yeah, we'll be putting this head back together, hopefully. So we've got our head set up on our press, which is just convenient for me at the right height and uh, we're going fully old school. We're going uh, back to the 1930s here and we're going to use a hand tool to actually do a valve grind. Uh, not the fastest way of doing it of course, but uh, again, for the purposes of what we're trying to achieve here, we just want to basically try and get these valves to seat a little bit better, um, which they definitely won't be doing at the moment. Um, they'll be going back in the same order they came out and keep in mind too that uh, if uh, this uh, all went ahead as planned and, and we did do a full rebuild on the motor, then uh, we'd actually be throwing these valves away. We wouldn't be keeping them, we'd be putting in new seats, new valves, and uh, yeah, she'd be a new head. So as a general rule with these valve grind kits, they give you two pastes in the tin. You've got a coarse paste and you've got a fine paste. Now, if the seats aren't too bad and the valves aren't too bad, I'll just go straight to the fine paste. Uh, in this particular case, because things are a little rough, um, I'm going to use the coarse paste first. And what I'll do, I know that because I'm using the coarse paste, 
Um, the suction cup that comes with the kit um, won't hang on to that valve enough to allow me to actually spin that properly. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use the soft jaw on my drill and hold on to the valve from the underside and basically just uh, spin that valve using the drill. Um, it'll happen a lot faster, uh, but we'll also get an even cut on that surface. So we'll just put a little bit of that paste around there. A little bit goes a long way. You don't need much. Remembering we're gonna to have to clean it all out as well. So. Um, now I've oiled up the shaft of that valve, so we'll carefully drop that in. We don't want any of that going in our, our valve guide. All right, we'll attach our drill from underneath. Now we, we need to be careful because we don't want to damage our, our valve stem in any way. Just take our time putting it on there. Right, I think we're attached. We can put our finger on top and we'll just give that a few spins. Right, that should be more than enough. We'll take our drill out. Pop our valve back out. And we'll clean that off and have a look. So what I can see straight up is we have cut a nice clean edge on our valve, which wasn't there before. We'll clean up our seat here and try and have a better look there. Yep. And the same applies for the seat. I'll actually stop the camera and uh, I'll get a close up for you so you can see what I'm talking about here. So here's a valve seat that uh, we haven't ground yet, we haven't got to. And here is the one that we've just had the grinding paste in. So you can even compare it to the one beside. There's a, there's a definite difference there. Um, we've actually just ground some of that material out. And uh, yeah, we're starting to get our valve to, uh, to seat properly down in there. What we will do now is we'll go to the fine paste. Um, our valve also, you can see that we've got a nice uh, a nice clean edge on there now, which we didn't have before. So, all right, we'll put our fine paste in there and uh, yeah, go again with the drill. I'm sort of trying my best here to bring you right in on the action so that, uh, yeah, you can see what's going on. Again, we're, we're trying to be as careful as we can. We don't want any of that paste going down in the valve guide. So we'll clean our valve off, we'll put some fresh oil in there and um, yeah, just try and work clean. Sit that there for the moment. Now we'll get our fine paste. And as I say, a little goes a long way. So we don't need much in there. I could put it on the valve, but I'm often here just to, to wipe it around the edge of the seat. And then, I don't know, just old habits, I suppose. Radio, right we'll slide that valve, drop that down in there. Seat down in there nicely. It's a nice uh, plop there as it moves into position. We'll get our drill attached. Radio. Okay, that's all I'm going to do. We're just polishing that up now. So we'll clean that off. Wow, yep. I don't know if you can see that, but that's, uh, yeah, that's quite a difference. That really is quite a difference there. So look, these valves are, uh, you know, at the limit of their, their use by date. But again, you know, for what we're trying to do here, um, this will help us on our way. There we go. Okay, so that's our number one valve done. A little bit more oil there. I want to keep that oil flowing. And we get a nice plop, and we can actually feel that valve is, is seating really, really well around right now. 
that's actually really good. I'm just going to put a little bit of oil around him. That's lovely. Beautiful. I think we've done rather well there, considering what we've got to work with. That will work for us. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work my way through the rest of these valves. I'm not going to bother showing you that process because it's all just repeat of what we've just done. It's a little bit time consuming, but hey, that's all part of the fun. So we'll do that and then we'll pick up when I'm uh, basically putting the valve springs back on there and we're reassembling. Okay, well, we've got our valves really nicely seated in there. I'm very happy with the way that's all worked out. They're all. Uh, and it's spinning quite freely there now. And uh, as I say, it's certainly going to be an improvement on what was there when these were drawers. It's, uh, it's better than it was. So, uh, righty out, we're going to break out the uh, valve spring tool and uh, yeah, we'll put the springs back on. They should come and uh, go back in a whole lot easier than they. Uh, and they came out, that's for sure. Right, we've got our valve spring compression tool on there and uh, what we need to do now basically is put these collets in place. Um, so we're going to carefully sit those into the top of the valve, or valve stem I should say. And these act as, as a little wedge if you like, uh, that once you release uh, the tension out on that spring, uh, they fit into their little slot and uh, yeah, hold everything together. Just got to get them positioned. Okay, and then we'll, uh, we'll start releasing the tension. That's valve number one done. So from here, it's just basically a process of going through and doing the same thing on every valve. Rightio, well, there we go. That's all our valves back in and our springs and collets all fitted. Um, yeah, I'm super happy with how this has turned out. Um, like I say, a bit of an experiment really when you're doing it like this, you're never quite sure how it's all gonna come about. But uh, yeah, I think we'll, uh, we'll kick some goals with that head. It'll certainly be good enough for the testing that we want to do on this motor. Um, I don't think our little valve, uh, our valve spring tool did too badly. Uh, a few issues uh, initially when we were taking these valves out, which weren't really the fault of the tool, it was just the fact that everything was stuck up. So um, we needed a little bit of extra persuasion to get those collets out and, and free everything up. But uh, all in all, I'm pretty happy with the result. Well, that's as far as we're going to progress uh, in this particular episode. Um, we'll do a part two uh, next week, and uh, yeah, hopefully fingers, toes, everything crossed, uh, we can get this engine back together and see if it will fire off. Um, what we know uh, so far, we have got a fair bit of wear in the bottom end of that motor. So we found that nut that was split um, and that would have been uh, definitely causing the engine to make some rather strange noises. Uh, whether that was the reason the truck was parked up, I'm not too sure. Somebody was obviously uh, starting to take the truck apart and uh, have a look at it and then uh, for whatever reason gave up. Anyway, look, I really appreciate you tuning in and watching the channel. Um, yeah, thank you so much for your support and all the messages that keep flooding in. Um, you know, it's hard to believe there's that many Morris fans out there, but uh, yeah, look, really appreciate the support that you're showing. Um, if you like the videos and you like what we're doing, just click that little thumbs up, the like button there, and uh, please feel free to subscribe. It, it just helps with our data and uh, shows us if we're hitting our mark. Um, you can leave comments, we love that, and uh, also to many, many of you are reaching out uh, through the, the different Morris Clubs and uh, also now uh, through Gmail. So uh, don't forget, you can send me an email with uh, a bit of a letter and uh, some pictures of your project if you like, and that's morrislcrescue at gmail.com. All right, guys and girls, again, thank you so much for tuning in. 
And uh, yeah, safe travels, happy restorations, and bye for now.